This is not a video to make you feel depressed or powerless. The information you are about to acquire is supposed to empower you, to put you into action. I'm not doing this video for anyone in specific, but I know that many can benefit. How many people prostitute themselves around the world? We don't know exactly. All we know is that whatever number is put up by governments and human rights groups, the number is in the millions. According to French foundations, CELS, which fights against sexual exploitation, there are about 40 million people who prostitute themselves worldwide. 75% of them are women between the ages of 13 and 25 years old. Even more difficult to number is the amount of children thrown into sex trade pushed by poverty, lack of education, drugs, abuse, homelessness and wars. Though we don't know the exact numbers, we most certainly know that for a young child to start a life based on survival via selling sex, surely it will be a sentence of a lifetime of sexual bondage, unless we do something about it. You say, what? I'm only one person. What the heck can I do? What I say to you is that first, to do something about an issue, you have to know of the issue. If the issue bothers you enough, then you have the feeling that you have to do something and then hopefully that feeling will become an action. To simplify your life, I will limit child prostitution statistics to four countries. First, where I was born. Second, where I live at. And the two other countries that got it worse in terms of child prostitution. So, I was born in Brazil. Yeah, beautiful country with friendly people, lovely beaches and weather. When you think of Brazil, you probably think of women with fake breasts, dancing with G-string on carnival, or something soccer related. Well, as a Brazilian, I think that all their parting effort made governments forget its own people for many decades. Here are some basic statistics and not so mainstream news about my beloved country. According to the Brazilian Institute of Geography and Statistics, 11.2 million people starve in Brazil today. Poverty is one of the biggest reasons why people resort to prostitution. The organization ending child prostitution, pornography and trafficking say there are around 500,000 children are thrown into prostitution. All the sources in Brazil put the number at up to 2 million children. In the mining regions of the North Brazilian Amazon basin, most of this type of open exploitation affects indigenous children. Portuguese were often given gifts peace offerings by the indigenous tribes they warred with. These gifts of pre-pubescent girls began a tradition of exploitation that still exists. The open sexual exploitation of indigenous women and children is a legacy of 500 years of the conquest of indigenous societies by the dominant Spanish and Portuguese. Ele vendeu você, então. Quanto? Esta índia Guarani tinha apenas 11 anos quando foi vendida pelo próprio pai. Cá, para mim, o que que você sentiu quando você chegou na casa desse homem desconhecido porque você não falava português, né? Eu senti medo, sabia gritar. Nós estamos na região de Dourados, em Mato Grosso do Sul, na fronteira com o Paraguai. Aqui vivem índios Guarani, Caiuá e Terena, que estão entre os povos mais ameaçados do Brasil. Nas aldeias Bororó e Jaguapiru, são cerca de 12 mil índios Guarani, numa área que fica praticamente dentro da cidade de Dourados. Falta espaço para plantar. Na dificuldade, é... nós, nós, nós temos assim, para nós plantar, não tem, tem pouco, né? E não tem casa bom, né? não tem luz. Tem hora passa até dificuldade, até comida. Né? A proximidade com os brancos trouxe para as aldeias muito mais do que um novo idioma. De carona vieram o álcool, a maconha e a cocaína. No município de Ponta Porã, as adolescentes indígenas são as principais vítimas da desestruturação familiar nas aldeias. 
Este lugar onde nós estamos fica no Brasil, mas do outro lado da rua já é Paraguai, município de Pedro Rua Cabaleiro. Nesta região do lado brasileiro tem muitos pontos de prostituição de adolescentes, inclusive indígenas. A dona Iraci é do Conselho Tutelar de Ponta Porã. Qual que é a principal dificuldade que vocês encontram para trabalhar nesta região? É, como vocês perceberam, né, a nossa divisa é somente uma rua. E as, os adolescentes que comparecem até das aldeias que vêm se prostituir aqui, sabem desse limite nosso de autoridade aqui. Chegando ali na rua, atravessou para lá, o conselho já não pode fazer mais nada. Australia got a good in most things. As a person who lives here, poverty is a contentious issue to apply in Australia. Though, in the 2012 UNICEF's report card 10, it was stated that 10.9% of Australian children were living below the poverty line. The report reviews the extent of child poverty and child deprivation in the world's advanced economies. Unlike most populated countries where poverty is widespread and you can see it and feel it in every corner, in Australia it is restricted to areas. But what mostly influences child prostitution in Australia are personal histories of abuse, violence, homelessness and or drug addiction, as found by the ECPAT report in 2006. According to a study by Childwise, the Australian arm of the Global End Child Prostitution Pornography and Trafficking Group, there are an estimated 4,000 children involved in prostitution. Three men have been arrested, accused of running a child prostitution ring in Sydney's southwest. It involved seven girls, one of them just 12 years old. Early this morning, police make a house call at Warwick Farm. Inside, two young women are under arrest. Their sisters, 19 and 22, accused of pimping out underage girls for sex with middle-aged men. It shows a, a very uh, ugly underbelly of uh, our, our society uh, and uh, it's something that uh, um, you know, does shock us. As well as Warwick Farm, police raided homes in Canley Vale, Cabramatta West, Northmead and Chester Hill. Three men were arrested, alleged clients aged in their early 50s. A police strike force has been investigating a child prostitution ring since February. In March, one of the sisters was first arrested for allegedly charging men between $10 and $100 for sexual acts with two girls in motels and cars. They were just 12 and 13. Since then, five Five more girls have come forward. I'm of the belief that uh, perhaps we have more young children out there that have been uh, subject to this um, this matter. Any more victims or witnesses are asked to call Crime Stoppers. Those arrested today are expected to be charged tonight, and if convicted, could be jailed for up to 14 years. Jody Spears, Seven News. India is part of the Asian continent, and it holds a population of one billion. 242 million as per World Bank in 2011. In 2010, the World Bank reported that 32.7% of the total Indian population fell below the poverty line and earned $1.25 per day, while 68.7% live on less than $2 per day. Again, our nemesis poverty plays a huge part on driving people to prostitution in order to survive. The latest UNICEF data shows that one in three malnourished children worldwide are found in India, whilst 42% of the nation's children under five years old are underweight. The Indian government states that there are 2.8 million prostitutes in India, but human rights groups claim the correct number approaches 15 million. Mother barite jara dhoke tara khara blo. मौत माता लोग फिर आप उन घों के आने के चुगाला गाली खींचती जाए 
বলে তুই কি লাইনে নামবি এরকম বলেছে বলে দুদিন পরে এরকম গালাগালি দিয়েছে It's almost impossible to photograph in the red light district. Everyone is terrified of the camera. They're frightened of being found out. Everything's illegal. It's a whole separate society within itself. I mean, you just walk down that one lane and it's another world. I knew I couldn't do it as a visitor. I wanted to stay with them, live with them and understand their lives. And of course, as soon as I entered the brothels, I met the children. Brothels are filled with children. They're everywhere. And they were so curious. They didn't understand why this woman had come and what I was doing there. They were all over me. And I would play with them and take their photographs and they would take mine. They wanted to learn how to use the camera. That's when I thought it would be really great to teach them and to see this world through their eyes. ঠান্ডা <laughs> খাচে তাহলে মানে বলে মারে একবার মানে কিছু করে না অবতলায় গীতা মাসের জন্য আমরা চা না বাসন মজা কাজ করি আমাদের পয়সা দেয় দুবার পালা দিতে একবার সকালে একবার বিকেলে আবার এমনি রাত্রিতে দোকান ফোকান করতে দিলে তাও যেতে হয় এমনি রুটি তারপর তরকা পরোটা এরকম ভাত ভাত যা আনতে দেয় আনতে যদি আমি অন্য কোনো জায়গায় যেতে এরকম পড়াশুনো শিখতাম 
According to the Rural Poverty Portal, powered by International Fund for Agricultural Development, at least 45 million people in Bangladesh, almost one third of the population, live below the poverty line. And a significant proportion of them live in extreme poverty. The poverty rate is highest in rural areas at 36% compared with 28% in urban centers. Many people have an inadequate diet and suffer from periods of food shortage. বলছি এই দেখ টাকা পয়সা আয় কর যে মানুষের খাওয়াস না কিছু পয়সা ধরে রাখ আর যত টোটাল কিছু না থাকে এই পয়সা উড়াই দাও বুড়ো কালে তুই কি ওর কাছে ভিক্ষা করতে গেল দেবে না কেন দেবে না তুই যৌন কর্মী ছিলি কিছু ধরে রাখতে পারো না হেড ইনটু দ্য টি শপ অ্যালং দ্য স্ট্রোল এন্ড ইউল ফাইন্ড আ মেকশিফট ব্যাংক আর বড় আছে ফেরে যাবে কম Shaktinari Shonge has made it a lot easier now for sex workers to save. Namale Nur Islam Shaktinari Shonge Sangathoner manager. Amader sangathoner taka paisa hisab ei manager e kore Nur Islam. Chole geche. Eha dro kon ja dikte hoy jodi na ami thak. Kabo kon ja kon ja. Sha samne kore the committee there's helping with livelihoods. More than 20,000 children are born and live in the 18 registered red light areas of Bangladesh. Boys tend to become pimps once they grow up and girls continue in their mother's profession. Most of these girls enter the profession before the age of 12. For those in the fight against trafficking, they deluge with such stories almost every day. But the more the women pour in, the more the official denial of their existence. The law treats Bangladeshi women and indeed trafficking as largely invisible, only as a minor aberration solved by occasional raids on brothels and then by deporting them back to Bangladesh. The target of recent raids has been Pune's red light area, Budhwarpet, a big and well-known destination for traffickers trading in Bangladeshi women. As their numbers rose, so did the frequency of the raids on them, making them fearful and suspicious. <laughs> As we walk up the stairs, the prostitutes are angry. They abuse us in Bengali. They think we are plain clothes policemen. A local social worker wants a prostitute here asks us to give up trying as the women are afraid. Mother is in Lake, in Bangladesh. How many are there? There are many people who are coming. So, they don't want to come. So, they don't want to come. They don't want to the raids are hardly the answer. For one, the entrenched network of pimps and dalals who drive the trade are spared. As for the women, they may have been cheated into a life of prostitution, but not all want to return to the poverty of their home country. Theirs is a life of dislocation, to move away from bigger cities like Mumbai and Pune to smaller towns. Like Ahmed Nagar in southern Maharashtra, which has emerged as a major hub of prostitution. Here, this local commercial sex worker and her husband tell us about the increasing intensity of the cross-border sex trade. 
आप कितने में बेचते हो लोग ये तो दलाली लोग क्या बेचते नहीं है ऐसा कमीशन लेते हैं पाँच हजार छह हजार रूपए में कोई लड़की लाया एक लड़की नहीं लाते लाते कार जैसे ऐसे लड़की नहीं लाते कुछ को नासिक देते हैं कुछ को अमरनगर में देते हैं कुछ को पूनम देते हैं ऐसे बाजार में आपको कम से कम नहीं तो सत्तर टक्के बंगाली लड़की मिले Gaon, just 15 kilometers from the famous temple town of Shirdi, we encounter open admissions from the women themselves. Do you want to learn Bangladesh? Yes. Do you want to learn Bangladesh? I am very sure. Do you want to learn Bangladesh? I am very sure. 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 It was not very long ago that this non-district town of Kopargaon was only known for the sugarcane fields. But in the last five years, this place is better known as a hub where one can easily find Bangladeshi sex workers. A development which has only angered local sex workers who complain and allege today they have been outnumbered by their Bangladeshi counterparts. ऐसा होता कि यहाँ की औरत लोगों ने उसको बोला भाई तू खुद पेट भरती ना तो दूसरी को मत ला तो उसने उसको बोला शेट को उनको सबको बंद कर दिया तो शेर बोला ठीक है बोला फिर उनकी मारपीट हो गई मारपीट हो गई और शेर का अड्डा जो था चालू वो भी बंद कर दिया किसने अल्लाह की लोगों ने बांग्लादेश की इतनी लड़की आने से टेंशन बढ़ गया है हाँ बढ़ गया है we head towards these dhabas along the Ahmednagar Malegaon highway on the outskirts of the town. Dhabas that double up as roadside brothels mainly for truck drivers. Most of the women here, like many others we met, insist that they are from West Bengal. A flimsy ruse, but a necessity given their uneasy status. <laughs> Their desperation takes us back to voices we have heard all along our journey. In Koper Gaon with camera person Chandan Gaikwad, Tejas Mehta for NDTV. The Red Light Green Light Project is a rehabilitation home in Delhi that aims to rehabilitate girls who have been rescued from brothels in that city. It's a point of first care where these girls receive protection for the first time, uh, but also a range of other services, so healthcare, uh, education, counselling, but also the opportunity to engage uh, the legal system so they have an opportunity to right their arms that have been exercised against them. Uh, but over a period of time that the girls are in the home, they uh, often get to a point where uh, they're uh, keen to um, either go back home, it, but where the home is not safe, then we um, uh, hand them off to other services where they might have long-term care. The girls obviously go through uh, ups and downs as they stay with us. They uh, usually traumatised, uh, but over a period of time they come to realise that they are worth something, that they, um, that they are human beings, that they don't have to be goods and chattels, that they don't have to respond to what other people uh, uh, dictate to them in terms of how their lives are lived, and, and they come to understand that they've got real value. 